And welcome to St. Francis um, American National Catholic Church. Um, yeah, I remember your little words. And um, please stand and greet our celebrant, Bishop George, and our people too, as we sing number, it's glory and praise for our God. It's number 671 in the book.
Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Celebrate, we believe. Judy makes me 
look good. Maybe the father said always for men. So that's my humble. Right? You would be happy if that was my humble. <laughs> but I was thinking about that. I was thinking about these readings that we have and how beautiful they are, and how for you and I, uh, when we hear the Acts of the Apostles, it is a remembering again. We hear how this word of God, this not the word of God, but the word of God in flesh in Jesus Christ is the embodiment of love and how it moves from Jerusalem. And we hear how Philip goes to Samaria and the people in Samaria are so moved by his words, but not by his words, by his acts, the acts of the apostles. We act as if Jesus would. And so people are here and demons are expelled. And so we remember what a beautiful thing, right? And we come here and we listen to the word of God and we remember again. In, uh, in Catholic theology, there's an anamnesis, and so the word anamnesis from, from Plato, it, it, it means a, a kind of a, 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 re, a remembering of all the multiple incarnations we may have had. But in a, in a theological construct, anamnesis is to make alive again by our memory. And that's what we do. We come here, we make alive again by our, by our remembering. And so we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, and, and we see a twofold movement. In baptism, the Holy Spirit is given to us, and at confirmation, it is stirred up, right? And so, so one of the theological points of Acts is to connect the church in Samaria to, to, to the church in Jerusalem, so that the Holy Spirit couldn't come until Peter and Paul came to their hands on that. But, 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 but we know that, that the Holy Spirit isn't contained by laying on of hands, right? That God's love is much greater than that. And then in Peter, the first letter of Peter, we hear, uh, uh, we hear the author of Peter exhorting the churches uh, in, in, in five different locales to not worry about persecution, to not worry so much about what people are saying to them, uh, that, that he's exhorting them, and, and to respond, we know this, right? Uh, uh, kill them with kindness in a way, right? And so Peter's reminding them that, listen, if people ask you why you're so joyous and why you're so helpful, why are you smiling all of the time, tell them, tell them why, right? Because of our experience of Jesus Christ who uh, suffered, died, and rose again, and so that death no longer has any power over us. And he says, do it gently and do it kindly, right? But don't worry, I have a friend in Philadelphia who always tells me it's none of my business what other people think about me, right? And so, so that's a good reminder here, right? It's really very true. And then this gospel. This gospel is amazing. It comes, by the way, for us, we hear this in, uh, we hear this in uh, Holy Week. We hear this is Jesus' very long farewell uh, to his disciples and to the people that he loves. And I was thinking about this. We were out to dinner. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, Natalie and Alona are now teenagers, and they're fun to be around now. And unfortunately, they're going off to college just when they get fun, right? So, <laughs> so, our and, uh, and, uh, so we were sitting at the table, we were having a uh, meal, and we started, uh, I started, which I often do, because I remember growing up, I would sit at the kitchen table, and my aunts would tell me stories of my great-grandfather and my grandfather. And they would weave these stories. We would sit for, I would sit for hours and listen to them. So I remember the joy. So I was sitting at the table with them, and I said to Natalie, remember the time you tried to kill me when we were on Block Island? And she's like, what? And, like, and I said, and then, and then I said, remember, remember when, when, when we lived here and you used to play in the yard there? And then I said to Alona, remember, remember when we were in, uh, in Puerto Rico and she and I were kayaking to see the bioluminescence, the bioluminescence, and I couldn't. I couldn't paddle anymore, and so she was paddling. And so I watched the smiles on their face. It was amazing. I watched them completely, you know, completely begin, put their phones down and pay attention. Maybe because, <laughs> maybe, right? maybe because it was about that, right? Maybe because I wasn't doing anything embarrassing. But I thought about that. I thought about us as we gathered here. And we, like, you and I, we do the same thing. We remember. There is something in the memory that has come to us from from the apostles, and we raise it up again. We sit around and we tell each other the story, and I think the apostles were doing that. They probably were, and by the way, we hear how the paraclete is coming. We hear how we are preparing for Pentecost, right? For the descent of the Holy Spirit. We hear how this is all beginning, and Jesus is reminding his, his hearers, and maybe they're telling the story to each other the way that we are hearing it again today. Remember at the end of Jesus' life, remember how much we loved him, Remember how he said to us, it was a little confusing when we heard it then, right? For a little while you're going to see me, and then you're not going to see me. But if you believe in me, then you'll always see me. Can you imagine hearing that? What is he talking about, right? So, so I think Philip says, well, maybe I got it, but I'm not sure I got it, right? So Jesus says, let me tell you again. Let me tell you about the intimacy of my love for you. Let me remind you again 
that I and the Father are one, and that I and the Father are in each other, and you are in me, and therefore in the Father. Listen to the intimacy of that love. Listen to that, and we call it, we remember it again, we bring it back again. Every time you and I come to Mass and we celebrate uh, the sacrifice of the Mass, it is the same sacrifice on Calvary, once and for all. It's not a new sacrifice. We enter uh, in, 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 in a way, in an amnesis, uh, amnesis, we tell again the story so that we make it alive in our lives again. That's what we do here on this sixth Sunday of Easter. We are a little more distant from, from, the, from the Easter Sunday. We're a little further away, and so the gospel is given to us so that we remember again. We remember that Jesus spoke to his apostles, and he spoke to us. And he spoke to us about love in its most profound dimensions. He spoke about the fact that he would not leave us orphans, that he would not leave us abandon us, that he would send us to be with us, and that we will know that because we can see that in him and in the Father and in each other. In the unity of our lives, we see some reflection of the unity of God, right? And so we come and we remember that. Not by coincidence, or maybe by coincidence, today is also Memorial Day, right? It is a day that you and I as a country celebrate all of those people who gave the full measure, right? And so we remember them again, right? Many of us in our own families probably had our fathers or uncles or someone who served, right? And so maybe they're no longer here with us. But because of our belief in Jesus Christ and that death has been destroyed once and for all, when we remember them, we make them alive again, right? They are never, never deceased as long as they are in our memory. And what we know is that love abides all things. It never dies. And so when we, you and I, we come and we celebrate Mass, uh, every time we come here, we remember again and we make Jesus present in our midst. Listen to some of the readings that we've had in these Sundays of Easter. Were not our hearts on fire when Jesus was speaking with us? They didn't recognize him immediately, right? Are not our hearts on fire sometimes when we hear about this intimate love that God invites us into? What an astounding and astounding uh, 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 mystery and experience that you and I come to share. It is a lifelong unpackaging of that in our lives. It is astounding. It is astounding. And so I can, I, 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 I was, uh, as I was reminiscing with the girls and I watched them transform into smiles, and then they told their own stories, right? I remember what that was like for me, right? I remember that it was a reflection of those who loved me. It was a reflection of their love. And so the apostles are reminding themselves again. Maybe they're sitting around in the upper room and saying, listen, you know, something's going on. Remember when Jesus told us this? And remember when we felt that? And remember this? And so, so this memory, they make him alive again, right, in their lives. And so they're preparing themselves, uh, as we are, for the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, right? And so, so, so I was listening to the, to, the, to, the, to the opening prayer today. I was listening to the psalm. It is with great joy. It is really with great joy. And joy is that experience that you and I have had that passes all understanding. It is something that dwells within us at the core of our being, that no matter what's happening to us outside, there is a sense of peace and joy in our lives because of this great mystery. The great mystery is, is that we are loved. We are so intimately loved that we are connected to the Father and to the Son through this love of Jesus. And it is the love and the Father between the Father and the Son that will descend on us at Pentecost, right? So, so what a what a glorious uh, what a glorious uh, uh, way to remember both our Memorial Day, right? Those who uh, those who have loved and walked with God before us, mark of the sign of faith, and what a wonderful way to uh, make Jesus uh, uh, the ground of our being uh, alive again through the liturgy of the Word in the Eucharist. So let us continue in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and tell each other the story of our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by faith, one in being with the Father, who the whole things was made, for us and for our salvation, the King of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and died and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds to the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one only Catholic and Apostolic Church. We have acknowledged one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith called uh, into existence by God's love, we offer our prayers uh, to, uh, to Christ our Lord. Our response will be, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, the Bishop of Rome, that God would fill him with strength and guide him in leading the church in fulfillment of its mission and in loving service of those most in need, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> For our Secretary of State and all diplomats, that the Spirit would give them well-trained tongues to speak words of peace and open the hearts and ears of belligerents to end the fighting in Syria, Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan, we pray. Raise the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been unjustly accused, that God will give them strength and hope as they endure suffering and hardship. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit fill the hearts of all in the American National Catholic Church. That we may speak a word of hope and renewal to all who are burdened and yearning for life. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit of God guide, guide Avery and Dylan as they prepare for their first Holy Communion and inspire their parents and all of us to be models of faithful disciples. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day weekend, we lift up all the men and women who serve our nation in the armed services. May the Lord protect them from all harm and bring them home safely. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, in mind, or spirit, that the Lord console them in their illness and guide their healers. And are there any whom we should especially remember? Joy. 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 Joy.
formed us in your own likeness and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, our Creator, we might be stewards of all creation. Even when we disobeyed you and turned away from your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but extended your hand in mercy that all who searched for you might find you. Again and again you offered us a covenant, and through the prophets nurtured the hope of salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, made flesh by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow and joy. In order to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for each other and for you. He died and, and he died and rose for us, but, but for him he, who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and renew the world in perfect holiness. Lord God, we pray that that same Holy Spirit may sanctify these gifts, let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we, that we may celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. When the, hour, when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to all of those whom he loved, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of Let us pray with confidence to the Father and the words our Savior gave us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Christ has a preferential option for the poor, and so what that means is he, he prefers the poor, and so we come poor in spirit and are nourished at this table. Others come poor in different ways, and we can reach out to them uh, and, and, and be a, uh, a change in their life. That's what we want to try to do. So, so, uh, so join us in that as you can. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, uh, we've been here, this is Memorial Day. Uh, this is our seventh year. So, oh my gosh, it's our seventh anniversary. So, seven, uh, we started here uh, in Memorial Day seven years ago. Uh, oh boy. 2007. 2007. 2007. Now, that's when we started at, uh, at, at the house. At the house. So, six years here, Six I years, think. thanks. So, six years. We seem to be stuck at six. I think we remember somebody saying that last year. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so you know, we're kind of growing as a parish, and uh, there are things that we want to do. So please join. You are you're always very generous in your support. So, so that's our next kind of move as a parish, right? So, so if you can help us with that, that's so, so, any other announcements? I think on Sundays, our, some of our new new about newly baptized are here. Elizabeth, um, where's she? she left? No, she, she's where? She's she in the back. Elizabeth, uh, we're going to meet on Sundays uh, to uh, continue uh, some of the unfolding of the gifts of the Spirit with our newly baptized on Sunday mornings before Mass. And if you want to join us, please do. It'll be a nice time to discuss, right? Some nice things. And then, and then uh, next Sunday is um, uh, Ascension. We're going to transfer the Feast of the Ascension from Thursday to Sunday. And then the following Sunday is Pentecost. And then, uh, and then uh, the following Sunday is... Um, uh, uh, I think the Feast of Peter and Paul, and then the following Sunday is Corpus Christi, and uh, Avery and Dylan will receive the, the body and blood of Christ for the first time, and so uh, that's the first Holy Communion, and then what I'm going to ask what we do uh, generally is have the parish children lead us in a procession with bubbles. So we'll, uh, we'll process with the Eucharist around the back of the garden, and we'll have benediction. So it'll be a lot of fun, all right? So come and join uh, Avery and Dylan as they celebrate uh, their first reception of uh, the garden of the soul and the of Christ. And in that, we might remember our own, right? So we might remember our own. So let us pray. All-powerful and ever-living God, in the resurrection of Christ, you restore us to eternal life within us the effects of this Easter mystery and pour out of our hearts the strength of, of that of the saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is singing. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.